Good morning, y'all. Welcome to our daily devotional, Grandfather's Box. Uh, we're, we're taking a little bit of a detour right now, and we're going through something called the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, this is like the nuts and bolts teachings of what it means to be a Christian. It's in Matthew 5, 6, and 7. Um, and, and we kind of launched this off yesterday. We're, we're going to be jumping around a little bit because we're going to fill in a few gaps of scriptures we haven't covered over the last uh, five months or so um, throughout our other little series that we're doing with the Grandfather's Box. And, and so this is the next part. Uh, after Jesus talks about what it means to be blessed, after he talks about how to handle when people persecute you, mock you, make fun of you, after he talks about the fact that you are the salt of the earth, the preserving element, the thing that brings great flavor in the blandness. Um, you are the light of the world. You bring warmth where there's cold, light where there's darkness. He, he teaches about law. He teaches uh, about what it means to be righteous. And then in uh, 521, he says this about anger. You have heard that our ancestors were told you must not murder. If you commit murder, you are subject to judgment. But I say, if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. If you call someone an idiot, the original Greek word here is uh, if you call someone empty-headed, you are in danger of being brought before the court. And if you curse someone, you are in danger of the fires of hell. So if you are presenting a sacrifice at the altar in the temple, and you suddenly remember that someone has something against you, leave your sacrifice there at the altar. Go and be reconciled to that person. Then come and offer your sacrifice to God. So let's unpack this a little bit here, okay? He, Jesus starts off by saying, You have heard us said, um, You have heard us said, You shall not murder. But I tell you, if you're angry with somebody, you're, you're in you are subject to judgment. Now, now, I want to be clear about something here. Anger is not a sin. For some odd reason, we get this mixed up as Christians. We, we emphasize so much the, the fact of forgiveness and grace, which we should, that if we're not careful, we can go so far as to say that even anger is not right. But God got angry. Jesus got angry. Y'all, there are some things in this world we are supposed to get angry about. Use right. Holy anger can be an amazing driving force to fight against evil, injustice, and wrong. And to protect the most vulnerable. And protect what is right. But he says, this is a slippery slope. It's, it's a great tool, but it's one of Satan's favorite wiggle spots to get into your life. If you are angry, you are subject to judgment. Now, I find this interesting that Jesus pairs this with the idea of murder. Because if, if as we've said before, the, the heart of the matter is a matter of your heart, where you come from, why you do it, the motives, what your intentions are, if you're meaning to be hateful and destructive, then, then the question then becomes if Jesus compares us to murder, can we kill something within someone? Can we kill someone's self-value? Can we murder self-esteem? Can we take the attention off of somebody else and put it on us? Can we kill their joy? Not just kill it, but as Jesus said, murder it. I mean, we hear people all the time try to outdo each other with stories. They they start to tell a story of something that's happened in their life, and somebody else interrupts them and starts saying, well, yeah, let me tell you about a time this happened to me. And, and they try to make it bigger, better, more scary, more painful, more, oh, look at me and paying attention to me. Did we accidentally murder something of somebody else? When we don't invest in safe space, 
trustworthiness in our relationships with coworkers, with friends, with people at school, whatever your environment is with someone that you're married to, going out with, with your children. When we don't invest to be in safe space, can we murder our relationships? Can we even kill parts of them? Jesus says here, this is a watch out spot. Anger can be a watch out spot. You, you see, people who are comfortable with who they are on the inside tend to be less angry. And especially so less angry about unimportant things. That they, they tend to not feel as if people are attacking them as much and start to see other people's motives. Now, sometimes people do have negative motives, but often I think that we can overjudge them with little evidence that that's actually how they feel or what they think. People that have peace about who they are, that they tend to feel like they need to defend themselves less because they take value in who they already are. They have peace on the inside. Now, I was reading this morning a book um, written about a woman named St. Clair of Assisi. Um, she actually discipled under uh, St. Francis of Assisi. St. Francis is known as being the animal guy. Uh, but a lot of people don't know he actually also started what's known as friaries. Uh, basically, monasticism, being a monk, but not living a cloistered, removed life. So being a monk in a community and serve in a community. That's what a friar is. And he did something very strange. He took on, especially in his day and era, the 1400s, he took on a female disciple, St. Clair's, who we know her as today. And, and, and she learned from him, and they actually became friends and shared teachings back and forth between their two disciples. Um, but one of St. Clair's big things is reflecting at yourself in the mirror of the cross. Looking at yourself and saying, who am I? I mean, who am I deep down inside? Am, am I pretending to be something I'm not? In how I dress? In, in the, the, um, the brands that I wear? And the type of jewelry I wear? And the way I present myself? Am I trying to look more educated than I am? More confident than I am? You see, the way she describes it is it's almost like you have a true identity in God. And when you try not to live into that, when you try to become something you're not, to put on a show, to fake it, even to just fit in, in places that really you shouldn't, isn't as good to fit in, people that aren't accepting you for who you are. She says that you basically spent all of your energy doing that. And you're out of sync with God. For you're not the person he made you to be. You're not using your gifts the way he meant for you to. You're not hearing him the way that you were designed to. You're not communicating with him the way that he made you to. And so everything feels like a fight. It feels foreign. It feels forced. But when you seek to live into the identity of who you are, you organically use the gifts God has given you. And the things that used to drain you all of a sudden fill you with energy and joy and fulfillment. When you give yourself permission to be who you are, the person God designed you to, then all of a sudden you have a peace. Now we always hear people say we shouldn't care what other people think, but that peace begins to flow into you more where that becomes more of a reality. Now, of course, the people that you love and care for, it will always matter to you what they think. That's good. That's not a bad thing. Um, but the people who you really shouldn't care about, you have more peace in who you are. Why do I say this? Why do I say this out of this scripture here specifically where it talks about, you know, the anger you're, you're in dangers of the judgment. You're in dangers of going to court. You're in dangers of the fires of hell is what it says. Why, why do I bring this up here? Because I, I, I find that when you connect with the person God made you to be, use the gifts he gave you 
Um, communicate with him in the ways he meant. When you organically live into that person, you find yourself less angry, less feeling like you need to defend yourself all the time to everybody. Validate yourself to other people, even to complete strangers. You find peace. It's not that you don't care about them. It's that you're such peace of with who you are you're able to less focus on what others think of you and more focus on caring for others. Y'all, there's freedom in that. And I share this with you in a little bit of vulnerability because I've wrestled with these spaces. With my hands, with what people think of the way I look, with what they think of my mental or physical abilities, what I can or can't do. And, and to find and center on the peace of God is a daily struggle for all of us. But finding that place is freedom. It is joy. It allows us to use who we are so that we don't have to worry about what others think, but we can see them for what they are. Not in a negative way, but when they respond negatively, to see the fact that they look, lack self-value. When they respond angrily, to see the fact that they are trying to look strong when they feel weak. We see them through God's eyes when we stop trying to hold up something that we're not and live into something that we are. And it becomes a whole lot easier to give life than to take it, whether that's emotionally, spiritually, or in any other way. So I hope today that you begin to ask yourself, who am I in Christ? What, what sorts of things organically help me to find fulfillment and joy that give me peace? And just choose today to live into at least one of those things. May we both find life and give life as much as we don't take it or kill it for others or ourselves. Pray with me. Heavenly Father God, we thank you for designing us with such purpose that you designed us to have peace. True, deep, inner peace. Something that can't come from a self-help book or from a 12-step success but most of all, that can only come from you, God. You give us tools all the time through different things, through those self-help things, yes, but ultimately you are the one. Show us who we are. Unveil to our eyes how we have accidentally or even purposefully been trying to steal life from others. And help us, Lord, in our anger to course it to let go of that which is not helpful and to gently but truly live into that which is right anger that we may use it for what you intended. We ask this through Christ our King. Amen. I love you. Stay safe. God's peace. I'll see you tomorrow.